2015, Vitalik Buterin released the Ethereum white paper and took the Web3 world by storm. In addition to being a store of value like Bitcoin, Ethereum is also programmable, so people can build powerful applications on this blockchain that can't be censored or taken down. Ethereum has essentially opened up a whole new world of possibilities for decentralization that could have never been imagined before. As groundbreaking as it is, however, the current version of Ethereum still has a few problems. One, it can only handle about 7 to 15 transactions per second. Compare that to Visa, which processes is around 2,000 transactions every second. The mechanism used to process transactions called proof of work also requires highly energy consuming equipment. Because of this, the network is susceptible to a 51% attack. Not everyone can afford the computing power required for proof of work, so a few big organizations can gain control of a majority of nodes, leading to high risk security and lack of decentralization. But the founders of Ethereum saw these problems all along and planned a major software update that's finally nearing the end of its seven years of development. This upgrade has been called a variety of names during its time, including Serenity, Casper, Shasper, and Ethereum 2.0, or simply ETH2. Think of this as all the goodness of the Ethereum network, plus more scalability, security, and sustainability. It's a huge deal. And not only for Ethereum, but for the future of the entire crypto space. Welcome to the Crypto Illuminati, a channel dedicated to making animated explainer videos, simplifying crypto, and decentralized finance. Hey, if you're new here, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on our future videos explaining the magic behind crypto. First, let's start with the basics. What exactly happening in this crypto update? Essentially, Ethereum is changing the method it uses to process transactions. This is known as the merge. Similar to Bitcoin, Ethereum uses a consensus mechanism called proof of work, which requires users to solve complex mathematical problems in order to validate transactions and secure the network. Although this method is effective, it isn't very efficient. People who solve these problems are called miners and have to invest massive amounts of energy and equipment to have a chance at mining the transaction blocks and earning rewards. In other words, you can't just download an app and start mining Ethereum on your phone or laptop. This makes it hard for new miners that want to validate transactions to earn block rewards. So why is this bad? Well, if only a few people can actually use Ethereum, it defeats the purpose of its existence, decentralization. Companies with huge computing power can take control of 51% of the validator nodes, leading to much higher security threats to Ethereum. A decentralized blockchain can't afford to have central points of failure by definition. The Ethereum founders realized this and included a transition to other consensus mechanism called proof of stake, which solves most of the issues associated with proof of work. Proof of stake replaces the process of block mining with validation, pretty much like, yeah, this block looks good to me. So here's how it works. Users commit their Ethereum as a stake to win the right to create a block. Based on their stake, one of these users is randomly chosen to be the validator. Validators can create new blocks and send them to the network for verification. If a block gets added to the chain, its validators get a reward proportional to the amount of their staked Ethereum. On the other hand, if someone sends a malicious block, they risk losing their entire stake through a process known as slashing. In order to become a validator, if the users must either stake at least 32 Ethereum, or join a staking pool with a smaller amount and own a portion of the rewards. Proof of stake eliminates the need for expensive equipment and cheap electricity, making it easy for the average user to participate. Developers anticipate Ethereum's electricity consumption as a network could drop by around 99.9% .9 post-merge. Now that is sustainability. Now. The merge is one major part of the Ethereum 2 upgrade, but the entire upgrade plan consists of three main phases. First is the launch of the beacon chain. This is a proof of stake blockchain that the Ethereum network will switch to when it transitions out of proof of work. The beacon chain went live in December 2020 and runs parallel to the main Ethereum chain called mainnet. The second phase is known as the merge. This is where the Ethereum mainnet and the beacon chain will combine and the Ethereum network will begin operating using proof of stake. Testing for the merge has already begun 
and could be completed within the next few months. The final phase of the upgrade is called sharding. Sharding is the process of dividing a database into multiple pieces. For example, imagine a crowded supermarket in your neighborhood. There's only one checkout line and one clerk. To fix this, the store decides to do an overhaul of the billing system. It takes out the manual billing counter and instead opens up self-checkout counters. The crowd of people gets divided amongst these counters, thus reducing the congestion in the store. People can now check out faster and the store processes more transactions per second. This is sharding. The main Ethereum blockchain will be broken into several smaller chains for different parts of the data set. Sharding is expected to be introduced sometime in 2023. When that happens, Ethereum will be able to handle thousands of transactions per second, solving the scalability problem. It'll also lower the entry barrier, as validators would only need to store or run data for a subset instead of for the entire blockchain. This will make it possible to run an Ethereum node from a laptop or phone, which in turn would make it even more decentralized and higher security. All right, so those are the changes happening in the upgrade. Now, let's take a look at these changes and what they mean for the Ethereum network and users. But before we do that, if you made it this far, be sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons. So, how will Ethereum change after the merge? Well, as we've already discussed, the transition from proof of work to proof of stake will significantly reduce the computing power and electricity consumption required for validating transactions, making the network more sustainable. But what do these changes mean for the price of Ethereum? Well, to understand that, let's take a look at how the tokenomics of Ethereum will be impacted by the merge. So, according to the simulation tool on ultrasound.money, after the merge, Ethereum issuance will go from 5.4 million Ethereum per year to 0.5 million Ethereum per year. This is a massive 90% reduction in supply. In addition, because a lot of Ethereum will be staked by the validators, the total supply growth is expected to go from 1.9% per year to negative 2.2% per year, meaning that Ethereum will be moved towards a significantly less inflammatory token. Another major impact of the merge, for the average user at least, is the rewards from staking their Ethereum. The staking yields are based on three key factors, total amount of fees, percentage of fees burned, and the number of Ethereum stake. Staking rewards are expected to be on 7 to 12% APR after the merge. That is way higher than it is right now. While the merge is an important milestone in the growth and development of Ethereum, we also want to address some of its common misconceptions. First and foremost, despite the change to proof of stake, we'll still be stuck with the high gas fees and congestion problems for a little while. Ethereum scalability issues are being addressed by roll-up based layer twos, but that's a topic for another video. If you plan on staking Ethereum, be aware that you will not be able to withdraw your Ethereum immediately post-merge. There will also be an update that happens after the merge that will allow you to withdraw your staked Ethereum. In the meantime, your Ethereum will be locked into the staking contract. Sorry. And to be honest, this period could last anywhere between three to six months, maybe even longer. We just still don't have enough concrete data on when the merge will occur, though it's expected to happen sometime in 2022. Look, the Ethereum merge will be a game changer. And while the upcoming merge is not the finish line for Ethereum, it'll mark an important milestone since no blockchain of this scale has ever overhauled its consensus protocol. That is until right now. Thanks for watching and make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. If you enjoy watching this, let us know your thoughts in the comments below.